Hi everyone. Today I want to look at functional dependencies. There's there's some recent debate about ways of um, making the feature a little bit more principled or a little bit more finely controlled, and I just want to explore some of the issues uh, that are going on there. So let's let's dive in. So. Um, so what is a functional dependency? The idea of a functional dependency is a statement saying that if one parameter of a class is known, then we also know the other. So let's, let's look at really easy examples first. So we're going to sort of have a toy example here. So um, here's how to declare one, right? So we declare a new class C, and then we're going to say here this little annotation means that the choice of A determines the choice of B. Um, so if we compile this, we're going to get uh, some errors. Oops, I need a little bit more space down here. Okay, so it says, oh, we'll allow multi -parent type classes, but it's going to complain about functional dependencies next. Um, so let me just jump to the chase there. Okay, so now this works. Um, well, what this means is that if I try to write instance c int bool and instance c int double, I get an error. The functional dependencies conflict between instance declarations, right? This annotation means that my choice of the first parameter determines the second. But here I've said that c int bool is true and c int double, so that means that I've violated my functional dependency. I've, I've not done what I promised to do, so that's a problem. Um, and, and that's the essence of it. The use of functional dependencies is that when I know one parameter, then I can infer the other. Um, so uh, let's see, what's a quick example of this? So if I have a C, A, B, A to B to, um, oh, it doesn't really matter, does it? So let's define function F. Oh, let's get rid of this bad thing here. Um, and I'm going to switch this around. You'll see why in a moment. Um, so uh, here, if I say X equals F applied to true and 5, um, well, then GHC is going to figure out that 5 must, in fact, be int. It's the only thing it can be because I've said that A determines B. We know that A here in the call to F, this A right there, um, is a bool. And this C bool int says, well, if the first one's a bool, then the second one must be an int. So we know that this overloaded 5 is actually an int. If I drop the functional dependency, if I comment that out and I try to run this, I get an error saying, well, I don't know exactly what type um, uh, to have here. Uh, so we need this functional dependency to fix inference. So that's that's the point of functional dependencies. I actually don't want to focus too much on that today. Instead, uh, I want to look at what are the rules for what instances can be defined with a functional dependency. So let's get rid of all of this stuff down here. So that's the that's the incentive. Is but and and there's much m more uh, m many more examples out there of useful functional dependencies. I don't want to focus on that today. Um, so we saw if I have instance c bool int, I can't also have instance c bool double. That violates the functional dependency. Um, what about instance um, c list of a list of b? Is that okay? Well, no. So here we get an error saying that uh, the coverage condition fails. So what is the coverage condition? So the coverage condition. Um, well, before I, I can describe this, we need to introduce a, a tiny little bit of vocabulary here. Um, so uh, I'm going to call, so we, in this functional dependency that A goes to B, we're going to call, we're going to say A is a root and B is a dependent. Um, and so, so the idea is, is that the root sort of fix which instance we're talking about, and then the dependents are, well, dependent on the roots. Um, so the coverage condition says, Knowing the roots fixes the dependencies, the dependence, I should say. Um, uh, so I could I could glorify that with a bunch of uh, subscripts and indices and a sub i and b sub i and all of this stuff. But but this is a, this is a pretty good intuition. So knowing the roots fixes the dependence. So here, if I know, for example, that this first parameter to C is list of int, that still doesn't tell me anything about this one. And so that means that the coverage condition fails. If I change this to A, it succeeds. Oh, uh, well, if it lexes, it succeeds. Right. So another way of stating this coverage condition is all variables in dependence are also mentioned in roots.
right? Um, the idea is, is that the variable, that's sort of the wiggle space that we have. And if every variable in a dependent is also mentioned in a root of that same functional dependency, we can actually have multiple functional dependencies on, on one class definition, although we're not going to explore that today. Um, uh, then for every functional dependency, every variable mentioned in a dependent must also be mentioned in a root of that same functional dependency. That's really the coverage condition. Um, it turns out, though, that this coverage condition is, is not quite powerful enough to do all the things that we might want it to. So let's go back to this C list of A list of B case. Maybe I want something that looks like this. Um, so here I'm saying that I have an instance for C for lists, and it's just going to degrade to the instance for C over the non-lists. Does that satisfy the coverage condition? Well, no, it doesn't, right? Because here, just if I know this first parameter, that doesn't really tell me anything about the second. If we look at this other statement of the coverage condition, all variables and dependents are also mentioned in roots. Well, that's not true here either. Here, B is mentioned in a dependent, but B is not mentioned in a root. Um, and so indeed, we get, we get an error. Um, using undecidable instances might help. Well, does it? Let's see. Aha, it does. So what's going on here? So undecidable instances enables what's called the liberal coverage condition. So under the liberal coverage condition, it's knowing the roots fixes the dependence. taking instance contexts into account. Um, so the idea here is that this functional dependency is saying that this first parameter fixes the second. So in fact, if I know what the first parameter to this instance here is, if I know it's list of int, well, I don't know if that's going to be list of bool or list of double or what it's going to be, but I can find another instance of C that's going to tell me that. Um, and, and so that's the liberal coverage condition. Uh, it turns out, so this is enabled by undecidable instances, which sounds odd, except um, uh, we can actually cook up an example where this liberal coverage condition can cause the solver not to terminate. I don't want to explore that right now in, in, in this video, so we're not going to see that. But that's why it depends on undecidable instances. Um, OK, so, uh, so we see that. Although, actually, this is, this is one of the oddnesses of, of functional dependencies in the current design. And some of the proposals that are floating out there, uh, there's links in the description, um, are about coming up with a more fine-grained way of doing this instead of just enabling undecidable instances for a whole module. So we've looked at what it means to define one good instance. Um, but our first example was actually not one instance involving variables, but multiple instances. Uh, so, so if we have multiple instances, we also not only do we need the coverage condition satisfied, we need what's called the instance consistency condition satisfied. Right? And so we can see if I have these two instances, right? there's something inconsistent about this. I've said that the first affects the second, but we don't have that here. Um, so we can write down the instance consistency consistency condition. Um, so this is called CC, coverage condition. This is the LCC. This is the ICC. Um, we have a lot of C words in Haskell. Um, so, uh, uh, so if we have the instance consistency condition, uh, what does that mean? Well, it means that if the roots unify, then the depend uh, uh, between two instances, then the dependents unify. Um, so here, this case, if the roots unify, in other words, if int equals int, well, it does, then these must unify. Oh, but they don't, so that's no good. Right? I could do this. Um, and oh, it just says that that's a duplicate, so that's kind of silly. Um, but but we, we can do slightly more glorious things here. So I can have instance C list of A. Um, oh, what do I want? I could say maybe A. Right? That's going to satisfy my coverage condition. Let's just check. Does that work on its own? Yes, it does. And then if I have C instance C list of B, and then oh, then maybe this is list of B again. Right, so this also satisfies the coverage condition, but I'm going to get a conflict between instance declarations, right? Because if I make the, the roots unify, in other words, if I change these both to A, then the dependents are different, right? That's no good. Interestingly, I can do something like this. 
if I say this is list of int, and then over here I have maybe int, now, oh, I need flexible instances here, but this should, I believe, work. That's from working. Ah, don't do that. Flexible instances. Yes, okay. Um, so here, this works. So, so we have sort of an overlapping situation, although that's only detected when we're looking up instances. Let's not worry about overlapping right now. What, what we're looking for is, is this instant consistency condition. If the roots unify, in other words, if, if these two things are the same, in other words, if A is replaced with int, then the dependents unify. Oh, well, this is working out. Um, okay. Um, but actually, so this, this one makes good sense, but this is also turns out not to be terribly, terribly useful because when we get to instances that look like this, that require the liberal coverage condition, the instance consistency condition becomes too weak. And so actually GHC implements the liberal instance consistency condition, um, which says that the liberal instance consistency condition which says, if the roots unify between two instances, then the dependents, well, I should say dependents over here, of course, then the dependents can unify under some substitution. Um, so the idea here is, um, let's see, instead of int and maybe int, uh, let's see, can I come up with an example? Maybe this is list of maybe B, and this is B. That, I think, oh, it says conflict. Do I agree that they conflict? Mm, no, not according to the liberal instance consistency condition. So there may be a bug here. Uh, that's something to explore later. Um, but I, what I will explore is that this liberal instance consistency condition, as described here, does some very strange things. So let's go back up here, and we need a few more classes to really see the glory of all of this. Um, and I'm going to my class, I'm going to add an extra parameter O that's not involved in the functional dependency. And then we're going to get rid of all of this stuff. Um, and now I want to look at, we have instance DAB, um, C int AB, instance um, Okay, whoops, no, 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 I don't want that. I want this. So this is accepted. So let's, let's take a look. Does this satisfy all of these conditions? Um, so here, the liberal, uh, or rather the coverage condition is not, is not satisfied. But the liberal coverage condition is, right? I know, notice I have no instances of, of D or E in scope yet. But here, um, because the liberal coverage condition allows us to look into the instance context, does this A determine B? Well, yes, it does. The context says that A determines B. Um, same thing in my second instance for C. A determines B because of E over here. Um, so then we look at the instance consistency condition. If the roots unify, in other words, if these A's are the same, then the dependents unify. Well, the B's might still vary. So the instance consistency condition is not satisfied. Is the liberal one satisfied? Well, yes, it is. Right here, the, if the roots unify, can the dependents unify? Well, yes, they can. But this, but this is very, very bizarre. So let's see what I mean by very, very bizarre. Um, so we're going to have a method named C here that's just going to take all of these so I can choose them easily. Um, and then now I can have instance, uh, uh, it doesn't really matter, does it? D uh, double car and instance E double float, say, right? So far, oh, no explicit implementation, that's fine. So far, so good. Um, and then the question is, oh, I just want to suppress that warning. So we'll say where C equals undefined. This isn't the interesting part. OK. Now, um, well, now what's bizarre here is that D, these, these, these instances can't conflict because they're of different classes, right? So there's not going to be a consistency condition here at all. But I can now, in 
x here, let's say x is a call to c of c to 5 of type int and o oh, 3 of type double and x of type car. And now y, I'm going to call c at true of type bool and 3 of type double and 4 of type float. This compiles. Now this is very, very strange because here, this is an instance c int double car. This is an instance c bool double float. But we have said that once we know this, once we know the second argument to c, in other words, double, we should know the last one. And yet that is patently false. Here I have car and here I have float, and that's a contradiction. And so these functional dependencies are not really very functional. Um, so, so that's, that's a, a discomfort and, and it's something that we're, we're trying to sort of work through. What should we do about this? Should we tighten things? Should we loosen things? If we just fixed this problem, lots and lots of programs in the wild would actually break because they subtly rely on this liberal instance consistency condition. So it's a bit of a hard thing to know, to know what to do here. Um, uh, so uh, I, I hope this has been interesting. Thanks for watching.